In today's video, we're gonna take a look at a knife that a lot of people have told me they wanna see. I'm talking about the Made in the USA Old Timer 152 OTG Sharp Finger. Oh yeah, that's what's coming up next here on Survival on Purpose. Hey, welcome back to Survival on Purpose. My name is Brian. Thanks for joining me for another Sharp Saturday video where it's Saturday and we take a look at something sharp. And as I said today, that something sharp is this Old Timer 152 OTG Sharp Finger, which is one of the new Old Timer designs that they've brought back into US manufacturing, which I think is really, really cool. So we've taken a look at three of the uh, classic folding knife designs in the Generation Series. And today we're gonna take a look at the kind of the one that a lot, a lot of people have asked me to, to, to take a look at, the uh, Sharp Finger. So, we're going to do that in just a minute, get you down to the old stump top, do some close-ups, talk about the specs, and do some of that nice stuff. But first, uh, two things before we do that, real quickly. First of all, thanks to the folks at Old Timer and Schrade for sending me this so I can show it to you. Second of all, primarily, this is a skinning knife. I get that. But I don't have anything to skin. I actually had an old pair of boots. I thought I would cut them up, and then I realized, you know what? There's probably people that could use those boots. So uh, I know there's a lot of homeless people that probably need some shoes. It really seems a shame to, to cut up a reasonably good pair of boots just because I want to test a knife. So I decided, you know what? We're just going to do the standard testing that I do on every knife, and you can extrapolate that to uh, whatever uses you might have for the knife. Bottom line, that keeps everything standard. So anyway, without any further ado, let's get down to the old stump top and get to doing some of that knife stuff. You want to? Okay, here's the old timer uh, sharp finger made in the USA, and this is the uh, 152 OTG. Let me just give you a couple of close ups of this thing. You can see both sides of it. It's a very, very classic sharp finger design. This, when I think of um, old timer fixed blades, this is the one that comes to my mind. So let's talk about the specs real quickly. It has a three and a half inch blade of 1095 high carbon steel, bone handles, genuine bone handles. It is a full tang knife and it comes with a custom leather sheath, a molded leather sheath. Just to show you that, I mean, this is absolutely the classic design. And like usual, these leather sheath straps have to get broken in. So when you first put them on, they're kind of stiff, which is good because you don't want it to start out loose. If it starts out loose, it's only going to get looser. So let's just see if I can get that thing done from, just for you on camera. Because the first time it's going to be hard. It really is. Okay. It didn't feel like it snapped. Let's see. I guess it did. Okay. So there you go. Nice leather sheath with just a nice loop. Very, very classic design. So, that's the specs. Let me just give you a couple more close-ups and so let you look at this thing really closely because I'm. it really is a very, very nice knife. The fit and finish on this thing is really, really good. There's the other side. The uh, grind is... I don't know if you can see that. The grind is really, really even here. And all the way up to the tip. You probably can't see that because the tip is so thin. So anyway, that, that's the specs. I'm gonna read you a couple things from the folks at Old Timer that came with it, just, just because. So these are some warnings. It says it's a sharp edge or point contacting a person or animal may result in cutting, stabbing, puncture, slicing, or penetrating injury or death. And so we all know that. And here's what it says about improper use. Improper use, chiseling, ice picking, prying, applying force onto the back of the blade, or hammering may result in injury. It also says, handle with care, a drop knife that contacts your body can result in injury or death. Do not throw your knife. And so, who would do that anyway? So, uh, let's get to doing some of that knife stuff. First of all, we're going to do the industry standard, uh, international, internationally in industry standard sharpness test, the redneck sharp test. Let's see. Get our testing medium here. Let's just see how this thing does. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, did you look at that? Uh, that is, as they say in the knife industry, yak shaving sharp. So we're not gonna do a paper cutting test because if, it, if it'll shave that hair there, I know it'll shave some, it'll cut some paper. Let's try the, the very end of it. See, so it's, man, look at that. Can you see that? Golly, that sucker is, by golly, sharp. Okay, well they say it's a sharp finger and it is sharp. So now, Let's do some of that stuff that they say you're not supposed to do. For example, it's been raining here and it's about to start raining again. And I've got a piece of, 
I think this is birch. I bought it in a, in a bundle, to be honest with you. It's got a big old knot in it, as you can see. So we're gonna see if we can beat this thing through this, through this piece of birch. And I know they say not to do this, so we're gonna do it, but maybe you needed to build a fire and you had to get inside here somewhere, get some dry wood. And it's a very thin tip, so you wanna be careful with that because this really isn't a super beefy knife, okay? Not a super beefy knife. But we got that part is dry now, right? So we're gonna split it out again, and then we're gonna split it one more time to get to a corner that is dry. It, at least it has not been exposed. Can't really say if it's dry or not when you say it has not been exposed to the elements, and except for the rain that's going on right now. And then one more time, we get to one of these inside corners. Okay, so now we've got some inside corners here. Let's carve some feathers real quick. You can see the water the spots on the, oh my gosh. You can see the spots on the, on the top of the stump top there, stump top there. Man, this thing carves this wood like butter. Okay, now, this thing does not have a very sharp feeling spine. I don't think it has a sharp spine at all. It's made to put your finger back here on. So I don't think this is gonna strike a ferro rod. Uh, it's very, very round to, to the point where, you know what, I'm not even gonna try because all that's gonna do is mess up this good looking knife. And it's absolutely, can you see that? Let me give you a close up of that. Can you see how round that is? It is 100% smoothed off, not designed for striking a ferro rod. So we just ain't gonna do that. So instead of using my second favorite ferro rod, we're gonna use my first favorite ferro rod, which I think everybody should have on them at all times. This one here, it's got a little butane canister attached to it. See if these damp curls will get, get it going. And it looks like they do, and they did. So there you go. So if you have this and a nice ferro rod with a can of butane, you can get yourself a fire. So since it's about to start raining, I think we need to get more scientific than this, don't you? So that was some of the standard practical testing that I usually do with every fixed blade knife. Uh, we didn't do any chopping because that would be totally ridiculous. And again, I didn't even attempt to strike a ferro rod with the back of the thing because it is very, very rounded. Um, so, and that's on purpose because if this is a skinning knife, you want to be able to put your thumb back there and get really good control. And you, you, don't, you don't want it to be uncomfortable if you're trying to skin a, a larger animal. But I digress. Because here at Survival on Purpose, you know we are all about the science. And to that end, we maintain a state-of-the-art cutting-edge knife testing facility. And one of the tests that I like to put all fixed blades through is the aerodynamic balance test using the balance orientation and rotation device. Now, if you remember, we just read that they, they recommend never throwing a knife. And I don't know why anybody would, why, why would they even have to write that in there? Who would throw a net perfectly good knife? But we are going to scientifically test this knife because... <laughs> I can't help myself. So without any further ado, let's do it. Again, proper scientific methodology is always important. Whoop, 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 whoop. Man, <laughs> that was a close call there. Let's try again. Whoop, 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 whoop. A little calibration required. Let's back up a step. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Oh yeah, much better. Whoop, 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 whoop. Even better. Once more. Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> I think I got it calibrated. Chug Norris tells Simon what to do. Okay, I think I've got her calibrated pretty well. We're gonna call this, we're gonna call this some balance. And I gotta say, I'm really, really liking this little knife. Again, as, as I've said in the past, I'm really, really glad to see that Schrade and, and Old Timer are bringing some of their manufacturing back to the US. 
Obviously, the price points on these U.S. knives are going to be more than the price points of the ones made in Asia. Uh, some of them in China, some of them in Taiwan, I think. But they are, again, made in the USA, so American workers are making these. And there's been some discussion about wh who's making these for them, if they're making them in-house or if they're outsourcing them. I think they're outsourcing them to somebody, but whoever's doing it, in my opinion, is doing a really good job. The fit and finish is great on these things. The edges coming out of the factory are excellent, excellent, excellent. And I just like that it's old school and they're using traditional materials. 1095 steel, real bone handles, and just very, very, very nice take on this classic design. So uh, I gotta say, I think this one is a winner. And if you're looking for a classic old timer, sharp finger, you cannot go wrong with this Generation Series knife, this 0152 OTG. So make sure if you're going to buy one of these, you look for the OTG because the G stands for Generations. Um, so there's probably still some other stock that doesn't have the G on it that is not made in the USA. So make sure you look for that OTG. So anyway, um, thanks again to the folks at Old Timer and Trade for sending me this so I can show it to you. And as always, thank you for watching Survival on Purpose. Remember, survival is not an accident. So be prepared. I'll see you next time.